Thank you. So yeah, this I can send them this, which is the salad dressing stuff. Okay. Anybody not ready? Let me know. All right, I love it. I love it. You guys are rock stars. All right, guys. So here's my little mason jar, okay? Get one that's a little bit bigger, that's fine. If you get a big honking one, that's fine. What I want you to do is take your so we have red wine vinegar, it doesn't matter what brand it is. Some Dijon mustard, doesn't matter what brand it is. Olive oil. The greener, the better. Okay. The darker the green, the better it is. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. So the ratio for dressing is always one part vinegar, three parts oil. All right, so I always estimate, I usually go a tablespoon, and this is enough for a large salad. You do not need to put a lot of this dressing on. So I'm gonna put a tablespoon, you can measure it. I've done this so many times, I know what my jar is for a tablespoon, okay? That's one tablespoon. I'm gonna go in three tablespoons. One, two, three of oil. Guys, I'm gonna go in a teaspoon of Dijon mustard, just a teaspoon. Don't go more than that. Pinch of salt, pinch of black pepper. And if you wanna put a pinch of sugar in here, you can, okay? I'm gonna put a little pinch in just because normally I don't, but I will tonight. Just a little bit, just a tiny pinch. You're gonna put your lid on here nice and tight. And then we're gonna shake it. And you're gonna see your dressing will start to take shape. And start to thicken up for you. So emulsification, right? There you have it. And that's it. So as it sits, it'll separate again. But just before we use it, you're going to shake it again. Now, if you want to mince a piece of garlic and throw it in here too, you can. Okay. I'm going to throw some chili flakes in there. You can. I don't recommend it tonight because we're going to go with the hardcore rustic Italian salad, which is best with your eggplant because we had lots of garlic happening with our eggplant already. So, all right, but I'm gonna throw a little bit of garlic in to show you. So you wanna make sure it's finely, finely minced. And I might just move maybe half a clove and I'm gonna use my microplaner, okay? So it's finely minced up. Half a clove. That's all we really need. Okay. This can be made a couple days in advance. The longer it sits, the better it is. All right. But every time you before you use it, you're gonna give it a good shake and get that nice creamy texture. Okay. You can also do this with white wine vinegar. Feel free to experiment with other flavor vinegars. You want to add a drop, a few drops of balsamic in there, you can. All kinds of things you can do, right? Once you have that ratio of oil to, to vinegar um, and the vinegars, you can mix two together, whatever. All right. But this is the winner right here. Okay. So I'm gonna slap a salad together. I'm not gonna add, you're not gonna add the dressing until you're ready to eat, all right? Because the worst thing that you can add to fresh greens and vegetables is something acidic. It'll cook it. It'll cook your salad if you make this too soon, right? I know you all know what I'm talking about. Maybe you had a Caesar salad that was really soggy. That's because it was made too far in advance, right? You get that in a restaurant, you send it back. Tell me you want a fresh one. 
for dressing live, very last moment. But I am going to assemble my salad now in a bowl, okay? Uh, what am I using? I'm going to use cucumber, tomato, some red onion, red pepper, this basic stuff. Simple is always best. Sometimes I'll just look in my fridge, see what I have for vegetables, and I'll I'll do that. I'm going to go in with some, um, I didn't get any um, microgreen mix, but I did, uh, I have organic spinach and organic uh, arugula, baby arugula here all the time. So I'm just going to little combine two of those together in a bowl. So let's go in with some baby spinach. All right, and you're gonna estimate how much you need for you, okay? I'm just gonna make one salad here. You can put as much of anything as you want. It's your salad, you do as you please, right? A little bit of arugula, I love the pepperiness of arugula, it's fantastic. All right, so cucumber, I like to do my cucumber. I like to do things a little bit fancy, right? That's just how I roll. Put some cucumber here. I can smell that eggplant already. Oh, yeah. This is one of my, uh, one of my tools that I use this comes from Thailand, guys. These are great. I ship them. If you want to drop by and pick one up, if you're local, you can. They're 15 bucks. I just take this and I just lightly score the skin just to give me some little lines, okay? Just some little lines. If you don't have one of these, you can do a fork. You just take your fork and kind of gouge in there about eight of an eighth of an inch, roughly. Just go all the way around, okay? I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna cut this chunk off just like so on an angle. All right, I don't like to cut things on little circles, it drives me crazy. Then I'm gonna cut this in half. Now I got two halves, right? And I take each one and I slice, see the angle I got here? I slice these nice and thin. See what we end up with, a pretty little Cuts there on the edge of our cucumber. Just makes a big difference, right? The little things. Throw that in your bowl. I'm not gonna mix stuff up together yet. I'm just going to wait until I add the dressing. So everything is just gonna get piled on top here. I love cucumbers, so I'm putting a lot in mine. Okay, so you can use a whole tomato, cut some nice small wedges. I had some cherry tomatoes left over from a private dinner party I did last night. That group, they had uh, Korean fried chicken, the sumamono salad, and then we did a uh, portobello mushroom ravioli with a tomato, a roasted cherry tomato and cream sauce. So I'm just gonna take these cherry tomatoes, cut them in half, right? If I didn't have these, I would just make small little wedges out of a whole tomato. Put as many as you want. I love red onion in a salad. So I know I'm only gonna use about a third of this. So I'm just gonna cut a third off with the skin on and then the rest is protected. I'm gonna throw it in the fridge in a little baggie. And I'm gonna take this skin off here. Now, when you peel an onion, just don't do the skin layer, do an extra layer of flesh, okay? Cause that's usually quite woody. You wanna get rid of that. And you can cut it against the grain or with the grain. Right, Adrian? Yeah, I could tell. So 
I'm going to slice this really, really thin, okay? As thin as I can get it. Okay, and I'm just going to separate all those little pieces like so. Just put them right on top of my salad here like that. Herbs are great in salad, guys. If you got some parsley, throw some chopped parsley in there. You can throw in some of the basil if you want. Um, so red pepper, I'm gonna change my mind. Uh, I already have some red in here with my tomato, so I think I have a different color pepper. I do, with my lucky day, I got a yellow one here. Oh man, I just took a peek at my eggplant. It looks amazing. Okay, so some yellow pepper. What I want to do is I'm just going to cut off a couple of quadrants, right? And with this, I just want nice thin strips. All right, my oven's talking to me. There we go, guys. So at the last moment, I'll uh, I'll throw some dressing on top, maybe a couple of tablespoons, and I'll mix this around. And actually, only one tablespoon for this much is good. All right. So let's go over and have a look. I know the eggplant is not ready yet, but I just want to see where we're at. That's starting to melt now. Okay. But in the middle of that eggplant is probably a little bit chilly still, and the cheese not melted enough. So, and I want to get some nice crust on top of that cheese. I want that cheese to be bubbling and have some nice brown bits. All right. So now it's critical time here. We don't want to go another 15 minutes. I might go, I'll put it in for five more, and I'm just going to keep, keep checking it every once in a while. Like after five minutes, um, I'll check it and see where we're at, all right? And if I need more time, I need more time. Simple as that. So guys, where I'm not doing a, um, I wanna talk about the, the dessert. Is anybody doing the dessert tonight? Let me know. Yes, I bought ingredients. Okay, excellent. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. All right, good. I'm not gonna make it. I'm just gonna explain it to you, okay? It's really easy. Very, very simple. So you're gonna get yourself a bowl or however many bowls people you have, right? A fancy bowl is nice if you have one. I'm just gonna use a regular old bowl here. All right, so let's pretend you get a nice big scoop of ice cream. All right, you're not gonna do this now, obviously, unless you like to have dessert for dinner. Let's pretend this onion is my nice scoop of ice cream, okay? Pretend it's white. Nice big scoop, bigger than this. And then you're gonna take your mango puree or mango pulp, and you're gonna drizzle a couple big tea tablespoons over, but only on one half, okay? Leave one half yellow or orange and one half white, okay? That's a nice, it's like a piece of art, you know what I mean? So you're gonna just put the sauce on one half. Then you're gonna take your cardamom powder if you have it, and you're gonna sprinkle a good couple big pinches of that on top of the ice cream, the whole thing. You're gonna chop up your pistachio nuts and put that on top. And that's pretty much it. Then you can decorate it with your chocolate, whatever you're using. Could be a brownie, could be a cookie, could be praline, chocolate praline, whatever you have, okay? And that's pretty much it, guys. So I think I covered all those things. We got the mango pulp, we got the ice cream, we got the cardamom powder. Um, yep, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. That's an amazing dessert. Um, it's not heavy, it's got all those flavor combinations um, work really, really well together. 
like the mango and the cardamom alone is just super, super, super good. All right. Uh, your dessert is only going to be as good as your ingredients, right? So if you get yourself a nice premium vanilla ice cream, you're, you're ahead of the game there. Okay. All right. So now we're just waiting for our eggplant. Um, when that eggplant comes out of the oven, you're going to let that rest. Okay. You want to let that rest for at least 10 minutes before you take it off the pan and, uh, and cut into it. Okay. Just want it to be uh, the cheese to firm up a little bit. If you don't, you risk it. It may just fall apart on your plate. It might all those layers just might slide off like a landslide. So just be aware of that, okay? Leftovers, keep them in the fridge. Um, I love this eggplant even better when it's cold or room temperature. For some reason, it's just, it's just I don't know. That's just the way I like it, I guess. I don't know. But it's... Um, it's good hot, it's good cold, it's good room temp. So if you can, if you can afford to, uh, to save yourself some and try it, like maybe, you know, you wake up three in the morning and you, you know, you get a little bit of, uh, you're craving some eggplant parm, you just go down and have a little piece, really good, or tomorrow morning, try it, you'll love it. I have some uh, basil left over. I'm going to throw that into my sauce. Okay. I'm just going to do that. So this, if you want to, guys, when, you're, when your perm comes out, you'll probably find it has just the right amount of sauce on it. But if you want to add a little dollop, okay, just heat it back up a little bit and then add a little dollop on top. or we'll put it on the side and let people just put on as they need it. All right, and you'll be good. You'll find that is excellent. So I'm just gonna clean up here and uh, wait for my eggplant parm to, to finish. Chef Darren, do you think you could also do this with zucchini instead of eggplant? Um, zucchini has a lot of water. You know what I mean? Uh, I wouldn't do the salt to it. And you can try it, you can try it. I mean, you never know, it might work out well for you. Okay, thanks. Yeah. This eggplant has more fiber, right? What if my, my oven talk to me again? Let's go over and have a look. Oh, well, big difference that five minutes. Let's see where I'm at. Hello, this guy's done. All right, that's what exactly what you want. If you don't have that, guys, I need. I'm just gonna turn it a little bit more. Sometimes ovens don't cook evenly. I'm gonna give the other guy a chance to darken up a little bit. But that's pretty much ready to go. Okay. And you make sure it's very important you allow that to rest for about ten minutes before you, like I said, before you dig into it. It will make a huge difference. Graham, how'd you make them? You do okay? I'm gonna turn my, see if I can flip my camera around here. There we go. Yeah, pretty good. Good. I did it in a Le Creuset baking tray, so it's not quite as browned as yours. Okay. So I'm just gonna give it five minutes. No, no, yeah, yeah give it that time. It, yeah, it makes a difference, right? That little right. bit of brown adds, adds a, lot of, uh, a lot of color. A lot of flavor. I mean, I just shut the broiler on for a couple of minutes. Yeah, you can do that. You can do that too. Just be careful. Okay. Yeah. Uh, guys, take some photos of your uh, of your dishes tonight for me and send them along. For some reason, I'm, I'm more excited about this class than any other class I've done. So I definitely want to see some photos. They don't need to be pretty. If you want to dress them up, great, but just straight, straight out of the oven, on the pan, take a, take a photo, okay? So chef, mine turned out pretty watery. 
It did. Would that, yeah. That, would that mean I maybe didn't put enough salt on my eggplant to let it? No, probably the water probably came from your cheese. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. So it's yep. sliding a bit, so it's not pretty. Yeah. And I would say that the little balls that I chopped in half, like it just made a difference for everything sliding all over the place. I think those yep. big slices are better. Yeah. It's going to taste yep. good though. The sauce oh, yeah, is good. amazing. <laughs> yeah, 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 good. Um, just let it cool down for for a while, and it'll it'll probably improve once it firms up. Okay, but with any with anything, especially in my classes, if if you sometimes if you don't get the right ingredients, I know sometimes we can't, but especially for this one, that that cheese is the most important thing for this dish, right? That we get the right cheese. Sometimes it's small balls. Um, maybe if you grate it. It might work better, okay? But sometimes the smaller balls have more water content in them. Um, if you squeeze them in some paper towel, it might remove some of the liquid. I have no idea unless I'm there with you, I can, and I can, I can tell, right? But those big ones are the ones you definitely wanna get, okay? But I'm confident that once that cools down, uh, you'll see a big difference, okay? I'm gonna pull mine out of the oven. I know it's done. And whatever you do, don't give up on this dish, okay? Try it again once you get all the right ingredients. We got the cheese at the Italian market. It was really oh, good. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, fresh mozzarella cheese uh, by Syrah. See that, guys? No, oh, it looks great. Uh, yeah, and this one slid over a little bit. And that's kind of normal, you know what I mean? Because my eggplant wasn't really cut evenly, but. You gotta let this rest because it'll firm up and then you'll be able to remove it from the pan, okay? You have yeah, to our, we sent you ours. It looks, uh, we're happy with the turnout. Thank you. Good, good, good. And I wanna know how it tastes too. Once you dig in, I won't be here when you do probably, but um, just send me a note, let me know. Guys, so your dressing, what you're gonna do is, you're gonna shake this up really, really good. Get it nice and creamy again. Probably put like a tablespoon or two in there. You don't want to overdress it, okay? Trust me, because this is quite potent. So lightly dress it, mix it up, and serve it up, okay? It's a great compliment with this uh, with this parm here. See if I can't force this guy back up. Oh, look at that cheese. Wow. Fantastic. All right, I gotta uh, take some photos soon. I'm gonna hang out here for a little bit with you guys, okay? I gotta make a phone call to the gym. I gotta sign up for a class. Laura, how'd you make up? Excellent. Where's my hunter? Where's hunter at? <laughs> I'm take a picture of it. There's gotta be a way. Guys, you have any questions? Are you all good? Here's Hunter. Hi. Hunter. Hi, Hunter. Hey, Brian. Oh, I see him. Yeah. Hang on. Hunter. Hi, Hunter. Hey, 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 Hunter. Half a thing. Yeah, half a piece, guys, for a serving is, is great with your salad. Um, 
If you get garlic bread to go with it too, that's a bonus. Is it half a piece? Is a serving? Or yeah, whatever. Whatever a serving is for you is, is a serving. We want to have. I would, serve, I would take four of these easily. Like I don't want to. What did he say he would do? I'll kind of start. Switch over. I'm going to kind of have ham hash. Ham okay guys i'm gonna sign off if nobody has any questions um we'll see you on the next one for that cheese um like i said i'm gonna try to put together a mediterranean i'm off mute It'll be our next one it's gonna be an eye open for that thank you yeah thank you for joining me guys i appreciate it thank Glad you thanks give this a try so all right. Take care. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Thanks a million. Bye. Appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye, thanks. See you, Blair. That was great. Excellent. That yeah, was. Thank you. That was fun. Yeah, that was that was quite easy, right? It was just a few, yeah. few simple steps, and you throw it all together. <laughs>